smoke test right here. Oh. oh. Yeah, it's shutting down immediately. Yeah. Let's take a look at no load. Yeah, it's definitely a power supply. Ian is a wizard here, and we have just taken apart this power supply, and it's looking pretty cruddy. It's fine, it's just dirty, that's all. That's what I meant, cruddy. Oh. Yeah. Cap's looking all right. Well, I need to replace these two, probably this one as well, and that one. Just a matter of if we have spares, because these are higher, or higher capacitance ones, I don't know if we have them here. Mm -hmm. If I, we don't have them, maybe you can um, tell me which ones, and then I can write it down. And... I heard, I heard that uh, trying to work with an Apple Mac uh, from back in the 80s is the most difficult to try to get disc copied for. Max from the 80s. Uh, only the 800K ones, 400K ones. You can just run with any newer Mac that has internal power. Checks. And we are recapping this power supply thanks to the genius Ian. 10 years here. Huh. How'd you find out about the place? Oh, uh, I don't remember. All right, go ahead. Okay, so this is a switching power supply, and the way a switching power supply works is it takes the AC in, 120 volts AC, it rectifies it, turns it into DC, filters it with these big capacitors, and then it switches it on and off real fast, these little bitty transformers, oh, wow. and then regulates it. And over here at the output section, we can see we've got red wires, 5 volts, ground, 12 volts, uh, that's a negative voltage, and you can follow the trace, so there's your 5 volts, comes over to here, and there's an inductor and then the filter capacitors for the five volt rail, which are right here, these two right there. And so I'm gonna replace those two. And then the 12 volt rail, you can follow, comes in uh, here, goes over to there. And this uh -huh. is the cap for the 12 volts. But I'm guessing your problem is probably on the five volt rail because that's the main power supply rail for this thing. Yeah, and it just it just powered off as soon as we turned it on. Yep. So it, just, it winds up being kind of. Solder sucker. Oh. And that'll remove the solder from the joint. Oh, cool. Yeah, I don't have that thing. You're just wiggling the the yeah to get it you get it kind of freed, and then we can straighten out the lead. Because the problem is the leads are all bent, so you can't get them through the board. Right now the lead is straight. So wow. And the uh, and they're all clean. It looks like. Yeah, they haven't leaked, but they're old. They're old, and uh, actually have a fun little tool which we can play with. Is this to check if it's like? No way! Look at that thing. What? So we put the cap in there, and it's testing it. Wow. So it's way under value. It's supposed to be 2200 and it's registering as 1500. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's that's awesome. But you don't need one of these testers at all. Like, no, you're just going to replace it. Because but I I I did do no, that so are cool. from experience and knowing how they're owning the circuit and knowing right. where the battery is. That's the thing I need is that that, that little pump. Yeah, the, this particular one I like. Uh, I've only had it for a short period of time. Oh, it looks amazing. A, I normally use the regular plastic kind, but Connor showed me this and it's nice. And you were saying you like to confirm the, the, those capacitors for just the scientific aspect of it, knowing it's just for fun. All right. Before, I only got that tool, and also I just got that tester tool recently. And mm -hmm. of course, now that you have a new tool, you got to play with it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
So was that on, uh, what was that called, that website? Um, Alibaba? I'm sure you can get them on there, but I got it on Amazon. Mm. That is fun. And I love how it looks too. It's not too bad. It's not nearly as bad as the other one. <laughs> 16 ohms, that's about right. And let's check to here. You got a short on your 12 volt rail. Is that what it is? Yep. You get a bad old tantalum capacitor in here. Which you said was the common. Very common on these. So the reason the power supply won't turn on is because it's being loaded down. Okay. There's a short between the ground and the 12 volts. And it's, it's on it's the on, board. It's either on the motherboard or on one of the expansion cards. I see. So, oh, I, was, I felt the heat. I was like, what the hell? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just <laughs> <laughs> um, And uh, I would pull the boards out. Okay. And then try check. Well, we can check the resistance again and see if it and was see if it's one of the boards, boards or if it's the motherboard. Got it. But there's a short between them, the 12 volt rail. So either and the, chances are it's one of these capacitors. Mm. These little yellow dipped capacitors is bad somewhere. Okay. So, but we'll have to figure out: is it on the expansion cards or is it on the motherboard? Okay. I mean, we'll troubleshoot by. Okay, pulled out all the cards. You see, you were saying these resistors here may be the problem? Uh, the tangible capacitors might be the problem. Those are called what again? I'm sorry? Tantalum capacitors. The C58, the little ones, right? Yeah, the little yellow dip ones, okay. So you can see the ground is in the middle here. These yep. four are in the middle. So these, those are the black. Yellow is this 12 volt mm. wire. And that's the third one from the end. So you're the third one from the end. Mm -hmm. And one of those black ones. Oh, the ground. Okay. Yeah, the ground. And you're still shorted. So the, the short is on the motherboard. Okay, so we got to pull out the board. So we'll, yeah, remove the motherboard and we can start kind of checking. It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, there's two schools of thought on this. I know some people will just Create, cook up a great big power supply to it and blow stuff up, but mm. that's dumb. Um, get the motherboard out and we can check the capacitors with the meter and desolder a couple and figure out where the short is. Got it. The big moment is here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's probably that other cap needs to be changed because it shuts down because there's no load and also it's not working right. Let's try the 12 volt rail, which is where that bad cap is. And it doesn't shut down immediately. So basically, you, 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 put, you had to put a load on it because it shuts down automatically if you don't. Right, so we're using a, a old car headlight because it's a low. Resistance is that the yeah, word? Yeah, it's, it's a resistive load. Okay. It's a resistive load that doesn't, you're not gonna blow up. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna have to get a new capacitor here, this one right here. Yeah. All right. So let's just double check. Uh, the, on the power connector, yeah, it is the third pin over. This is your, this is ground, and this is your 12 volts. Right. And we'll show it. So the quick and easy is there flipping. I'm pretty sure that this should be connected to that power connector. Let me just double check that. This one's something I can clip onto easy. All right, so leave that connected. And we can find when it so in these caps here, looks like somebody's already been in here. Oh yeah, that somebody, doesn't look good. Somebody soldered on that before. Hmm. So that's suspicious. That's not the problem though. Seems to be working. Yeah. We got the 10. 
Although it's, somebody really went out that. No, this came off. That's why. Okay, so that should be normal. What's, what, what's the number for normal there? Uh, well, I'm just looking for anything that's not shorted. And these are three terminal capacitors, and I think the outer two are ground. I see. And the center, center one is one. the power. So, if, like, that's ground. Check the center, and it's not shorted, so. I got you. Um, You're getting a reading off of it. Yeah, so it's probably, and it's probably one of these, but it, because the 12 volt isn't used by a whole lot of things on the bus, so it's probably one of these. I mean, I could probably speed this up if I actually looked at the manual and figure out where the 12 volt actually is. Where, where are we gonna find the manual? Yeah, it'd be online somewhere. You want me to, you want me to Google it? Yeah, it's not that big a deal. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't take me too long to find it the old fashioned way. So we're looking for a zero reading on yep, the middle rail? That one's shorted, at least that's on a 12 volt. Oh, that's probably, oh, that's negative. That's why. Outer two, it's not actually shorted. Hmm. Yep, there we go. There we go. This one's shorted. At least this is on the rail. This is on the 12 volt rail. And we're not this getting. Is, and these two are both reading as short. It's just one of, it's not this because you are a, not a tampon. Let me desolder this one. This is this a good is, one for the gun? Yes, it is. All right, let's heat it up. I'm gonna use this, put it over the half leg. Do you touch the board or you leave it a little? Yeah, it's on the board. Oh, wow, that worked. Mm. No way. Yep, mostly worked. Oh my God, I'm so excited, I don't know why. So now, oh, so you just heated up the pins? Yeah, because kind of... it was stuck to the sides. It looks like your soldering gun's turned up really high. So mm. that's ground. That's ground, mm -hmm. and that's the twelve volt, and we no longer have a short. And if we just check on this capacitor, between the outer two, we should always have continuity because that's the ground terminal. But then the center is also ground. So this capacitor is shorted out and that's why the power supply wouldn't turn on. Yeah, I think this is 12 volts because it's upside down now. So we just verify by checking. Yeah, and now the 12 volt is no longer shorted. So it's definitely that little guy. So it should work now. So we can plug it in without putting, replacing it? Yeah, it is. So far no errors. Obviously, they need one there. Yeah, I want to know if you're wrong. Plug everything back in. Yeah, the 301 we were getting before was the keyboard, and then the 601 was the disc controller. Alright, 601. Not ready. Hit F1 and Let's see what happens. See if that happens, yeah. Yeah, F1 worked. Yeah, and it's not, it's not booting the disc, so it's, does, it either doesn't like the disc controller or it, there's something weird with the disc. Plugged it in, right? Yeah. yeah it's plugged into it, please. You're in basic. I mean, it boots into basic if you don't have a disc. Woo! You got somewhere with it. Yeah. I heard something. I read something. It's reading. It's still reading. Look at that. Sounds good. In a current date, this thing has no, no real time clock. <laughs> Look at that date. Oh, gotta enter the date? Just hit enter a couple of times. Oh man, Ian, success. That is pretty awesome. Can I, can I do anything?